What's up guys, I hope everybody's having a wonderful week, getting a lot of things done in Monster Hunter and in real life. It's your boy Death Gun, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite recent builds. I haven't had much time to play, but I definitely had time to test this build out. Now, this build works around being completely immune to sharpness loss. What, what are you talking about, Death? Well, with this build, you will never have to sharpness, you will retain max damage, and on top of that, your attacks will never bounce. Overall, it's an incredible build, so let's check it out. It starts off with the Empress Sword Sticks. This sword gives us very nice damage, even though it's not the highest, it's very nice, it has base white sharpness, and it can go even higher, 10% base affinity, and blast element, very nice. On top of that, it has two level 3 slots, one augmentation slot, and a skill that is very useful, razor sharp. We'll go more into this later. Now let's check out the helmet. This is very important guys, the Nergigante Helm A. This piece really completes out the build, giving us maximum might level 2, attack boost level 1, and a level 1 slot. Then we have the Draken Mail A, which gives us a level 3 slot, critical eye level 2, and critical boost level 1, as well as 1 point into Soul of the Dragoon skills. Then we have the Draken Vamp Braces A, which gives us 2 level 2 slots, critical eye level 2, and attack boost level 1, as well as another point into the set bonus. Then we have the Draken Coil A. This is very nice because it gives us a level 3 slot, critical eye level 2, and power prolonger, which just really adds on to the build. And one more point into the set bonus. Very nice. And our last piece, obviously, is the Draken Greaves A, which gives us a level 2 slot, 2 points into attack boost, 1 point into critical boost, and our last point into our set bonus which is amazing. Then we have the attack charm level 3 which gives us well 3 points into attack boost. And the last two things we have are our equipment and I always tell you guys you can rock whatever you want here. This build deals a lot of damage and I want to stay on top of the monsters you know. So I usually either go with the temporal mantle or the rock steady mantle accompanied with the affinity booster. You guys can rock whichever you want. Now let's talk about the skills. First off we have the step bonus, Soul of the Dragoon, which makes it so elemental damage is increased for jumping attacks. This doesn't really help us a lot, but every here and there I do a little jump off a ledge and I really like landing those blast element damage hits. Then this is where things get sharp. We have Soul of the Dragoon 4 set bonus, which prevents your weapon from losing sharpness during critical hits. This build will make it so you pretty much always land a critical hit, which is amazing. Then we have attack boost level 7, maxed out attack boost, it really gives us that extra damage seeing as we're not using one of the top end game damage dealing long swords. Then we have maxed out critical light, level 7 giving us plus 30% base affinity. As you can see we have pretty high base affinity right now. Then we have critical boost level 3 which increases damage dealt by critical hits to 40% from a base 25%, very nice boost. Then we have Weakness Exploit Level 3, which attacks that hit weak spots have 50% increased affinity. So if we're hitting a weak spot, we're already over 100% affinity, guys. It's ridiculous how much affinity this has. And even though it's not worth having all of that, you don't really need over 100%. It just makes it so you're always landing those crits. Then we have Handicraft Level 2, which gives us Weapon Sharpness plus 20 to make sure we stay white even longer, even though I really don't think it's necessary. Razor Sharp makes it so it halves our sharpness loss. Very strong ability with this build, guys, because if we're landing crits, we will not lose sharpness, and if we're not landing crits, our sharpness will be lost by half. So overall, our sharpness is going to stay on for a really long time. Mind's Eye is just an additive, you guys do not need to have it, but it just prevents attack from being deflected and it also shortens the distance before ammo and arrows reach maximum power. In this case, it's just for our deflection. Our attacks will never bounce and we might still land crits even if we're not hitting our particularly weak points. Power Prolonger is just there, but it allows long swords to stay powered up a lot longer. We only have level 1, so it's not really necessary. And Maximum Might, guys, which makes it so it increases affinity when standing is full. We have level 2 which gives us plus 20%, meaning if you've used the longsword you don't really use your stamina when you fight so we're usually going to be fighting with 85% base affinity guys. That's how crazy it is. And I'm just using the longsword as an example but this build applies to so many weapons especially if you're going to be using the Lunastra line. 
Now let's check out the decorations. Here we have two handicraft jewels in our sword which is very nice to keep up our sharpness even though it's not really necessary. In our helmet we have an expert jewel to bump up our critical. We just want to have as much critical as we can so all the time we're landing crits. In our chest we have a tenderizer jewel which is a little harder to get but I'm pretty sure that if you guys grind it out you'll be able to get some of these. In our chest we have a critical jewel too to give us that critical boost and a tenderizer jewel to get even more weakness exploit. In our waist we have that mind's eye which is really rare if you guys don't have it you can slot something else in here. And in our legs we have our last tenderizer jewel so as you guys can see we have weakness exploit by decoration so it could be a little hard to get that on your build but I'm sure it will give you something to look forward to. Now I'm going to be testing out the damage in the training room. It is not a moving target and it doesn't have any resistances so it's still not an accurate test. Nonetheless it's a very good way to show raw damage. That 110 hit right there is a clear example. But even further than that I want to show you guys my sharpness gauge. Keep an eye out on how it does not go down. I'm hitting all my spirit helmbreaker and then I'm going to show you my full spirit blade combo back up to spirit helmbreaker. And it's not even budging like my white sharpness gauge is just incredibly high, my damage is very nice and I do want to point some things out. This build is not the heaviest hitting build with this particular armor build. What I mean by that is that you could switch your weapon to a heavy hitting monster line like the Devil Joe or you could even go for Elementless. Nonetheless it really lets you customize your weapon while keeping almost all your skills on your armor which makes this build really flexible when you think about it. I personally like the Lunastra Zen Ogiva line because it has so much chemistry you know it makes it fun to play very simple all you have to worry about is doing damage and getting your heals in as you can see my sharpness never went down throughout this whole speech I've been giving you but I'm sure you're saying well a stick is not gonna do nothing so I'm gonna be showing you guys a fight against Nergigante not tempered nothing special just a regular Nergigante as we all know they have the same base health the reason for this example is to show you not only how much damage this build can do seeing as it's not the stronger version of the build per se, seeing as you can bump up the damage with stronger weapons, but to show you how throughout the whole fight my sharpness never goes down. This is very interesting because it's a rather long fight, I mean it was around 3-4 minutes and for my sharpness to not go down throughout a 4 minute fight is really crazy. And that lets me know that if I'm gonna be doing a 10-15 minute fight I still probably won't have to sharpen. This is pretty much everything there is to the build, there's everything there is to the video. I hope you've really enjoyed it, let me know what you think about it, if you have anything you would change or anything you would modify, post it down below. If you have any questions or you guys want me to cover anything in particular when it comes to Monster Hunter, also let me know, and a quick heads up if you've made it all the way here. I'm gonna start heavy, like heavy coverage on Red Dead Redemption. That's gonna be the next big hit on this channel, or at least that's gonna be the next big hit on my gamer list. So I'm gonna be covering it. If you guys are gonna get Red Dead Redemption, let me know. We're gonna squad up. I already have a three-man squad. It's gonna be getting crazy. I'm gonna be doing live streams, and I'm gonna be pre-ordering it. And if everything goes well and I get everything going how I wanted to get it, I'm gonna be doing a 24-hour live stream on Red Dead Redemption. So stay tuned for that, guys, and I'll see you next time. For now, your boy Death Gun. Out.